<laughs> Did I ever tell you about my friend Bishop Harry Jackson? <laughs> so I decided to call him up and I imitated Pat Robertson. He answers, hello, this is Bishop Jackson. I said, uh, hello, uh, this is uh, Pat Robertson of the uh, 700 Club. <laughs> he goes, really? I said, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's Pat Robertson. He goes, really? I said, yes. He goes, just a minute. All of a sudden I hear, uh, hello, this is Pat. <laughs> I didn't disguise my voice for two weeks after that also. <laughs> All right, how are you here? All right, look at John 10. So the devil, sometimes when I call, I call my staff to see how they would react to a weirdo. Oh, Amy over there is going, yes, yes. <laughs> I have a new one that I've been doing, and I got Gene Bailey the other day. I was trying out for flashlight. <laughs> All right. Anyway, can we, let's preach the word here. All right. So, so look at verse 10. Okay. So the thief, that's the devil. Someone say the devil. He comes. Now watch what the devil does. Jesus not one time says, and I also am the same way. And so is your father. He says, the devil comes to steal kill and destroy. And then Jesus makes a distinction. He says, but, or you could insert that, I have come. So why did Jesus come? Hallelujah. I've come that you might have what? Life. life. Now that word life, this is what he was teaching, is called Zoe. It's the God kind of life. Amen? So the God kind of life. How many want the God kind of life? Amen? But notice what he says about the kind of God kind of life, or this in the Greek, it's called Zoe. So he says, I've come that you might have this God kind of life, and that you might have it what? Oh, people who don't believe in blessing. He used a word. He cussed among the religious circles. He said, yo, I've come that you might have Zoe, God kind of life, and more. Oh, don't say that. More. He didn't say less. He said more. He is the God of more. So part of your blessed life is, you know what? I look at it this way. My, if I am really in the blessing of God, I should have more blessing in 2022 than I had in 2021. Yeah, but don't you know the high gas prices? I don't give a rip. Even though I paid a lot of money for it the other day. But I just say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God, this is going, I prophesied to it too, and I say it's going down, 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 down. So here's the thing, more abundantly. You know, what, you know what abundant means? It means we always say, well, he's El Shaddai. How many of you ever said that? The Hebrew, he's El Shaddai. Well, what does El Shaddai mean? The God that is more than enough. So Jesus says, I'm coming to give you the God kind of life and more abundantly. Come on, more abundantly, more than enough, yeah. overflow, yeah. excess. Yeah. You know what the word more also means? And abundantly, it means lavish, great increase. That's a God kind of life. Well, you say, well, Pastor Hank, how did I get that? Go to John chapter 3. Look at John chapter 3. So in John chapter 3, this is how you got the God kind of life. It, it, it really came by your decision to choose life. Well, what life did you choose? Okay, how many of you were going down a wrong road fast until you called on Jesus and you received him, what? Into your life. And then God himself comes and lives inside of you. You received by grace and by covenant right through Jesus' blood. When you asked him to come in, he brought his Zoe, he brought his life into you. So now you have the God kind of life already in you. It's up to you how you choose to walk it out or not. Are you going to let the devil steal from you? Are you going to let the devil try to kill you and destroy your life and your loved ones? Absolutely not. It's illegal according to my covenant. 
So Jesus, watch this, in John chapter 3, he has a discourse or a talk with this man named Nicodemus. So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, who came to Jesus by night. And I don't think it was just that it was dark, even though it was. I think there was some darkness in Nicodemus, that he was not so sure about him, his own uh, eternal state. And he said, Rabbi, I know you're a teacher. You come from God. For no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. Now look at the, uh, uh, the, the net version, the new uh, English translation. Notice what it says. Jesus replied, I tell you, the solemn truth, unless a person is born from what? Above. above. Now that word above is very, very important. Unless you're born from above. Someone say above. Now, that is a very strong Greek word, and it's literally, it means, uh, it, it's, it's pronounced uh, anothen. It's A-N-O-T-H-E-N, anothen. And literally what it means is, so like when uh, Jesus was standing before Pontius Pilate, and Pontius was trying to be real tough, like some of these people in government are. And he says, Jesus, do you know that I have the power to crucify you? And up until that point, Jesus really hadn't said much. But he says something with so much authority backing him from God from above. He looks at Pontius Pilate and he says, you have no power unless it had been given to you from my father, watch this, above. God himself has given me this power, Pontius Pilate. Do you know what Pontius Pilate did? He goes, Washed his hands, man. There was so much authority from God the Father on Jesus backing up what he said. That's part of what that life, that above meant. Another example is when the Bible says that the, the veil of the temple was rent from the top down to the bottom. It literally means that God himself, or wasn't it the bottom up? I can't remember. Top to the bottom. What am I thinking? Some of you are messing me up. So anyway, no, from the top, because what it means from above, it literally means God himself came and his power tore that veil. So that now you have access with him. So you can understand where this word, you have to be born from above. You have to be born from the place where God himself dwells. His life dwells. Okay, this is why. Look at what Jesus said. He says in John um, 313, he says, and no man has ever ascended up to heaven, but he that has come down from heaven. So what did Jesus do? He came down and he said, it's even the son of man, which is of heaven. So Jesus is saying, look, I've come down from heaven, but when I speak, I speak with life. And that life is from God, from the place that I've come from. That's why John chapter five, verse 26, I'll quote this one. For as the father, it says this, for as the father has Zoe or life in him, so he has given that same Zoe life to me. So Jesus, why did he walk around with so much miracles, signs and wonders? Why couldn't they kill him? Well, because Jesus, you know, he didn't lay his life down. Yeah, but he was so full of God. He knew what was his rights. Amen and privileges. That's why he would have to lay his life down. Because he lived in that blessed life. That's why John 14 says this. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the Zoe. I am the life. Then he said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Some people think that the blessed life or the God kind of life that you get is only reserved for when you get up into heaven where there's no sickness, no disease, no sorrow, no, no torment, no depression, no struggles. Come on, uh, no hardships. That's the eternal Zoe life will be with God. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about that when you are born from above, when you receive God himself into your life immediately, that Zoe life, the God kind of life comes inside of you and it's also your rights of how you can demand not only before God, but you demand before the devil, you cannot touch me. I live in the blessed life. I live in Zoe. Amen. I'm going to prove it to you. So why did Jesus come? 
John 10, verse 10. I come so that I may give you life, come on, Zoe, and life more abundantly. Look at 3 John 2. So this is really in 3 John 2 what you and I need to choose. We receive it by grace, but we still have a daily choice. When something tries to mess with you, no, 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 that's against Zoe. It's not the blessed life. I'm not going to receive poverty. I'm not going to receive debt. I'm not going to receive sickness and disease. Jesus paid. I have a covenant now through his blood. I have a right to a blessed life, the Zoe life of God. Third John 2, beloved, I wish above how many things? All. all means all. I declare or I pray above all things that you may prosper. In other words, that you may have in the God kind of life that you may have success. That it will be so well with you that you will have prosperity, financial means. Whenever... Uh, Somebody has a need, you'll be right there because God's blessed you so much. And that you'll be in health. Wow, sounds like uh, God wants you healthy and he wants you blessed. What do most people die of? Most people die from sickness. And they die broke. And yet God said, look, you're supposed to leave an inheritance. Well, part of that inheritance is that your children will see you go peacefully. Amen? Not tragically. Not in sickness. Amen? Come on, this is your blessed life that you have a covenant right to. It's set before you. You can choose the curse. You can choose the way of COVID. You can choose the way of, well, you know, it's your birthday. You know, they bring those black balloons in. Man, if somebody brought black balloons, I would pull out my concealed weapon and I'd shoot every single one of them right there. And then I'd run them out. Get out of here. I live the blessed life. Above all things, you may prosper. Be in health. And notice you got to have part of this package is you got to have a healthy soul. That's why Proverbs, uh, Psalm 1, the, the opening text is part of living in the blessed life is you are not involved listening in the, uh, the, the, the counsel of the ungodly. You tune on. Uh, the news, and you watch a bunch of stuff, I'm telling you to get down in your soul. And then people wonder why they don't have a healthy mind. They wonder why they're afraid. Well, are you watching crime shows all day? They wonder why they're messed up in their marriage. Because you're watching soap operas all day, woman. I mean, it's so bad that the lady... You know, waits for her husband to come home and she doesn't have a stitch of clothes on. He walks in and says, wow, nice outfit. When'd you get that? <laughs> Never mind. That's how messed up some people are. You got to have a healthy soul. That's your mind, your will, your emotions. Now, go to Genesis chapter 2. I got to hurry. So in Genesis chapter 2, watch how this God kind of life came into Adam. Now, how many of you know about Adam and Eve? What happened with Adam and Eve? Okay, God, it says in Genesis 2, verse 7, breathe into Adam the breath of lives, plural. The breath of lives. And what that breath of lives mean in Hebrew is he had not only uh, life that could deal in the spirit realm, but he also had life that could deal in the natural realm. That's why it was plural. Amen. He could talk to God in the cool of the day, and yet he could also command in the garden. But he had God's very life in him. Now, how many remember this story? What was the first thing that the devil did when here this man is walking around in the image of God himself? Has the God kind of life. Now, think about the God kind of life that was breathed into Adam in the garden. Was it ever recorded that Adam had the sniffles? Was it ever reported when Adam and Eve... You know, we're kind of wanting to get together that Eve had a headache. 